A scientist has discovered how to brew the perfect shot of espresso. And no, it's not to call George Clooney either. <laughs> Hi there. I'm the Study Finds guy, Jeff Allen, and this is the latest from Study Finds. Please be sure to like and subscribe to get all of our latest updates. And before we get too far, it's espresso, people, not espresso. <laughs> and while we're on the subject, <laughs> it's not supposedly biscotti. Remember, irregardless. Okay, that was a short list of words that really pissed me off. Where was <laughs> I, kid? It may be a bit unorthodox to mix coffee with chemistry, but by doing just that, a group of scientists claim they figured out how to consistently pour the best shots of espresso possible. Now, lead researcher Dr. Christopher H. Hendon, or Dr. Coffee, as he's known to his colleagues, previously discovered in a previous study, well, that's a little redundant, <laughs> that brewing coffee with hard water, tap water with higher levels of magnesium and calcium tends to have a stronger, more bitter taste. Now for this study on the perfect espresso, he focused on grinding the beans and the process of brewing, hoping to figure out how those crucial parts of the process affected the taste of the finished product. He found that the grinding process, if done correctly, provides more overall surface area for the beans. But at a certain point, the particles can become too small and lose flavor. There's a point in grinding coffee beans when you make it so small that it like turns into a powder. Then they stick together and result in reduced extractions. And nobody wants reduced extractions. When it comes to the water, he says that the water should come into contact with the grounds uniformly, which does not happen when you use a traditional coffee pot. It just goes right down the middle, usually. Hendon turned to a team of baristas to help him figure out how to reach the top level of taste using his research on brew ratio and grinding size to perfect their method, saying, quote, by predetermining the coffee to water ratio as well as the water pressure, the maximum extraction can be systematically determined. The barista can then iteratively improve their espresso reproducibility while reducing waste coffee mass, unquote. <laughs> That's a lot of words to say. Basically, don't grind your beans into a powder and don't use a regular coffee pot, but you will need to experiment. Whether you have an expensive pressurized espresso machine, which is like almost 10 times atmospheric pressure, the espresso stovetop three chamber pot like this one here, or a pour over scene here, or even a French press. Yeah, everybody has different stuff, so you do have to experiment. There's not a one size fits all here, folks. And you need to experiment with your grinder as well. All grinders are different. Like I said, there's a fine line between small grounds and powder. Also, the good doctor says, keep your coffee in the fridge, too. Ah, see, I do that. So I'm kind of on the right track. On a side note, Hendon says that if, quote, every single cafe in America was to implement the procedure, it would save the U.S. $300 million a year by reducing the amount of coffee beans used to make espresso. Wow. Thank you for your service, Doc. God bless you. <laughs> You can check out this and more info on other studies by clicking on the link in the description below and head over to studyfinds.com. Now I'm thirsty.